Hey guys, my name is Mark Todd. This is Mark Set Art. I'm holding my mic again today because it's been missing me. We're gonna talk about how I did this painting here. This one is done in oil, but there's other ways you can definitely do it. You don't have to do it in oil. This one actually is painted on a piece of wood, a little less expensive than um, some of your canvases, and things like that. You wanna paint something a little bigger. You can go to a Lowe's or Home Depot, something like that. Get a maple board, and then you're just gonna gesso it. I'd recommend gessoing it about three times. You're gonna sand the board first, sand each layer of gesso, and then put another layer of gesso mixed with the paint. This is an example. So it's the same size and everything as that one. This one was a larger board that I had cut into three pieces. They can cut it there. Uh, you might wanna put tape on it first before they cut it because it can cause some splintering things at the edges. Or if you cut it at home, you know, put some tape down and then cut it to help prevent that. Here on the sides, you can see where you've got the gesso, which is white. And then on the front, you can see where we put the gesso down with a little bit of a burnt umber to give it some color. That will help your eyes to not be fooled by the color. I don't mix my paints on white either. I usually have a piece of glass with something gray or another color under it. That way, you're not getting fooled. When you look at something that's white, it can appear to be darker than it really is. And the inverse is true. If you had, were mixing something on something that was completely black, it might appear to be lighter than it really is. Good idea is to kind of know what's gonna be the mid level would that value be and try to have that. That can be difficult before you've actually started the painting or anything else, but having at least something down that is not just white will help you selecting your colors. I know when you're doing it digitally, you're just kind of right clicking and you know, saying, oh, I want this color and putting it on there and you don't like the color, you just adjust it quick. But even if you're doing it digitally, I really do recommend that you learn how to really observe color as well. I, I know it's quick and easy to change it, but it just, it just helps you a lot. Um, even if you're doing things digital, frankly, I recommend that you try to do things traditionally just so you understand the process better. You understand how colors mix. You understand how colors complement. It really does make a difference. All right, guys, let's talk about the problems of painting on backgrounds that are not matching your surrounding colors. So here we have a brown square on a white background. And we're gonna change this white background into a black background. And you'll notice all of a sudden our brown square looks very orange. And this actually is not surprising if you understand how colors work because orange and brown are the same color. Brown is just a darker shade of orange. Now most colors when they go darker, dark reds, dark blues, uh, they still look like the same color. Orange uh, and some shades of yellow, and let's really kind of do this, there's no brown on the color spectrum. You don't look at a rainbow and see brown on it. So what you're seeing is dark oranges or some shades of dark yellow. There are a few ways that we can start a painting. If you watched my one on the wall up study, I did the values first and then I glazed over that color on top. This is a very common method in the early days of paint because color paint was very expensive. It gives you a different effect of transparency and it's not a right or wrong. I don't have just one way I do it. On the painting we're going over today, I did not do it this way. I put down my colors early on, starting with a very lean black. So there's a lot of turpentine in this. It's your battle over lean rule. We can go over that a little bit later, but basically you don't want wet layers underneath dry layers because it'll warp, it'll crack it. So you want to make sure your lower layers are completely dry or that they're mixed with something that will make them dry faster than the layers on top of them. That obviously is not an issue if you're doing digital or even acrylic paint because it dries so quick. Putting down colors, you'll notice it's not quote unquote the right skin color or whatever. And there is no one skin color, to be honest. It's a lot of different colors. If you want the paintings to look good or your art to look good, you want to have a lot of different colors. So I put cool colors where I want it cool and I put warm colors where I want it warmer. So if you'll notice in say the cheeks, the nose, areas and chest, some of those places, I want the blood vessels closer, I put more red and I put more blue where I want things to be cooler. This underpainting will still show through as long as we keep our paint thin enough. As I'm doing the background, you might've noticed I have a very smoky and opaque at the opaque at the end. So I'm not doing a lot of detailing. I just want shapes. I want colors. I, I want to give a feeling of a dark sci-fi world, but I don't want it to be lasting. It's not the subject. So I want just to kind of let people's imaginations take it where they want to take it. You want to put more detail into areas you want people to focus on. So even if you're a loose painter, which I typically am not, even when I do things that are loose, I end up, I'm going to get a little tighter and 
by the end it ends up being really tight a lot of the time. But let's say if you do things that are a little more loose, like a sergeant or something like that, you'll want a focus point. And usually it's gonna be an eye and you'll have one eye that you're gonna detail a little bit more than the other one. Because when you look at somebody's face, you're not actually looking at the whole face. You're typically looking at one spot. You're usually looking at one of their eyes or the other eye. And as an artist, you kind of want to tell people where you want them to focus. Because I tend to paint tighter, I don't do quite as much of that on most of my work, but you still want to add detailing where you want people to look. As we add more and more layers to the painting, you'll notice that we start seeing more depth to the skin, and it'll give it a little bit of that translucent. Skin should not look flat. It should look like you're peering through it a little bit, because you are, I and mean, that's why you see the color of veins through it. It's not opaque. So adding in a lot of different colors will, will give it that variety. Now, I didn't mean to pull this meme on you where all of a sudden we jumped way ahead. However, I wanted to be in the center while I was doing some of the detailing and I only intended to do a little bit and then put the camera back on. And basically next thing I knew I was kind of done. But we'll talk about a little bit of what I did here. So obviously the background, I put over a thinner layer of paint just to kind of give it that ambiguous look of smog and smoke. I still wanted colors to come through it, so I don't want it to be too thick on there. Adding in, if you will, kind of a little bit of imperfection. So I wanted to have some more pores that are visible, some freckling moles. If uh, something's too perfect, it's a little off. It can be looking plastic and it can even be boring you know, when things are too perfect. If you have a character that's maybe a mythical elf or something that's supposed to be perfect, it's all right on one here and there, but I would avoid making everyone too perfect where it's no blemishes, no discolorations at all, because it just, I, I think it tends to be less interesting. Adding in the sweat, you want to consider the colors around. So if we look on our right side, there's more blue in the color. If you look on the left side, it's a lighter because of the different colors that are hitting the character. And it's made up of a lighter color of the skin, whites, darker colors. In order to sell the look of water, you need a lot of different colors to show that you're refracting those different colors through the water. Thanks for sticking it through. If you guys have questions, please leave them in the bottom. If you like what you've seen, Feel free to subscribe to not miss out on things in the future. I'll try to improve which kind of paintings we are doing in the future as well.